it's Jessie V. So you guys always request for me to make these types of videos. I've only started doing them recently, but I think you guys are just super intrigued by paranormal missing persons cases. And I honestly am too. Like whenever I'm researching them, I feel like a serious detective. Like I want to find out where they are. I want to like go to these locations and look for them. I'm just so intrigued by the newspaper articles about them. And there are so many. There's actually a book online called Missing 411 and that book is actually just one of an entire series and it's just filled up with missing persons cases that were never solved. So these videos could be like endless for me to make. So I think I'm also going to start making this into a series and if there's anybody in particular that you want me to cover definitely comment them down below but I have so many cases I can talk about and I really like them to be mysterious slash paranormal. That's sort of the route that I want to always go. So in today's video we are going to talk about the unsolved disappearances of the Bennington Triangle. Now I had no idea what this was until last week when I was researching but it's a chunk of land in Vermont that for some reason so many people have gone missing in. Like literally disappeared in thin air. Like it's not like just one or two people went missing there. Hundreds of people have just literally vanished in this small space of land. So today we're going to talk about some of those cases and oh it freaks me out so much. The fact that you can just be like on a hike or on a walk and suddenly you just like cease to exist. At first people thought like oh maybe it's a serial killer but after like 50 years had gone by and it was still happening people were like no this can't just be one guy. He would be super old by now. How are these still happening? So a ton of people are now just saying that it's got to be something paranormal. It says that the Bennington Triangle is a loosely defined area that encompasses the ghost town of Glastonbury, which was once a small logging community centered on the eponymous mountain in southwestern Vermont. It has been abandoned since the 19th century. So now the Glastonbury area is pretty much untouched. It's not a populated area. It's basically remote wilderness. So when you're going there, you're basically going there to hike. So these missing persons cases started 70 years ago. And since then, that area has sort of been a very eerie one and not a lot of people go there anymore since hearing about what's been happening. And not only are there unsolved disappearances, there also have been a lot of weird sightings like figures in the woods, monsters, even aliens have been mentioned. So the Bennington Triangle is just not somewhere that you want to be. Okay, so the first person who ever went missing there was in 1945. It was the vanishing of Mitty Rivers. He was a 74 year old local hunting guide. He led a party of four hunters around the area called Hell Hollow in the southwest woods of Glastonbury before he was suddenly lost. And people were really confused by this because he had been hiking and hunting there for so many years. Like he was 74 years old so he was probably doing this for like 40 years. So he knew the forest, he knew how to get around, so when he was suddenly lost people were like wait that's impossible. So the first day he went missing, tons of people searched for him and it was completely unsuccessful. But people were still sort of positive because they were like, hey, if he's missing, he's very knowledgeable about the forest, maybe he'll return to town soon. So people waited a couple days, hoping that he would find his way back. But this was unfortunately not the case. Soon there were more than 300 concerned locals and tons of people started searching through the vast wilderness for eight days straight through the daytime, through the nighttime, and they couldn't find a single shred of evidence. They covered the entire area. They couldn't find any pieces of clothing, anything he would have been carrying, no signs of him whatsoever. And then the next year, there was another case of someone going missing. And this is arguably the most famous missing persons cases in the whole area of Vermont. It was the disappearance of Paula Weldon. Weldon was an 18 year old college student at Bennington College. She decided to hike a leg of the long trail during her Thanksgiving break when most of her friends had returned home for the holiday. So instead of going home to her family, I guess she decided to go on a hike before. She was last seen on Sunday, December 1st, 1946. She was wearing easy to spot red and was entering the long trail near Glastonbury Mountain, but she never showed up for her Monday classes. So 1,000 people went to search for her. That was even bigger than the year prior when that man went missing. They even 
had a reward for finding her. If anybody brought her back, they would get $5,000. So just take this in. There were thousands of people looking for her. They actually had aircrafts going over the entire area that she was. So looking over the trees, looking over the trails. And once again, there were no clues as to where she was. It was like she also just vanished out of thin air. It's just so scary how these cases still remain open to this day. So three years after the disappearance of Paula Weldon, someone else went missing. And this one people say is a much more supernatural case. The other two definitely still were, but this one was definitely more so. So there was a 68 year old man named James E. Tedford, and he boarded a bus to Bennington after visiting relatives in St. Albans, Vermont. There were numerous eyewitnesses, including the driver that later confirmed that Tedford had been in his seat as late as the last stop before Bennington. So he was the only one in the bus. The driver saw him, people saw him get on the bus. But when the bus finally pulled into Bennington, Tedford was nowhere to be found. It was creepy because right before they hit the border of Bennington, the bus driver was just driving along, looking behind him, seeing Tedford sitting on a seat. He was looking at him through his mirror on the bus. And the moment they got into Bennington, literally Tedford just disappeared right from the bus. He vanished into thin air while inside a moving vehicle. Tedford's luggage was literally still in the seat where he was sitting. If the witnesses are correct, Tedford would have disappeared from his seat as the bus was traveling down Route 7 through the Bennington Triangle. Doesn't that creep you out so much? When I read that, I was like, no way. Like, I do not want to ever go there. Like, as much as I am intrigued by this area, I just don't want to go there. So nearly a year later, in October of 1950, an eight-year-old boy named Paul Jepson went missing as well. He was last seen happily playing in the family pickup truck by his mother, who left to tend to pigs at the dump where she and her husband were caretakers. Then he just vanished without a trace. Once again, they got all these people to be a search party to find him, and this time police even got bloodhounds involved. And I've talked about bloodhounds with you guys before. These guys can smell amazingly. Like, they found a ton, thousands of missing people all over the world with these bloodhounds. Probably millions even. Once again, no one could find him. And what's creepy is that as these missing persons cases go on, they seem to get more frequent, like they're more common, the space between them. For example, only two weeks after this boy went missing, someone else went missing. 53-year-old Frida Langer, who was an experienced hiker once again. She was there all of the time hiking. After hiking a brief half mile with her cousin Herbert, she accidentally fell into a street. So she told her cousin Herbert and her husband who was there with her as well that she was just gonna go walk back to camp to change her clothes and literally her cousin and her husband never saw her again after that. Helicopters were going over the forest, 400 people were looking for her and this is the only case where they actually found a body. Every other case they have not found anything. It was found near the Somerset Reservoir and the cause of death could not be determined which is really weird because usually when you find a body, you can easily tell what happened. Were they in a fight? Was it an animal? Was it natural causes? But people literally had no idea what happened to her. So those are all of the cases that I'm going to go over today, but it just shows you what a weird place this is. So if you guys are interested in me doing a series like this, just talking about different areas where people have gone missing or specific cases where people have gone missing, I'm just so excited about it and would love to continue. So definitely let me know. And don't forget that the month is almost over so this backdrop is going to be going to somebody one of you guys so if you haven't entered yet all you have to do is go subscribe to my other channel called vlogs the link is down below in the description and all you have to do secondly is go onto the video titled how bulldogs open gifts and comment your favorite part of that video it's just two steps and you good <laughs> anyways i hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and i will see you in my next video bye